sun, skin, and sizzle. Summer's the best excuse for getting rid of all those extra clothes. And all of that swimming, surfing, posing, and flexing builds up a huge appetite. It's 50% ground beef and 50% ground bacon. Body shot! Oh, look at that. For me, huh? Yes, yes! <laughs> Everyone loves the all-American staples, hot dogs, burgers, and bottomless beer. But now beachgoers have gotten a taste for something better, a lot better. My mouth is watering. It's got so many different things, and it goes from solid to liquid in a second in my mouth. Later, I might want to marry it. Banana covered. with chocolate, covered with chocolate. Delicious. So grab your passport and flip-flops and join Bikinis and Boardwalk's Best Beach Eats for a mouth-watering tour of the food craze that's hit a high tide in popularity. Do you feel like you're getting more naked each time someone picks a piece of sushi off of you? Mm, that is so good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you gotta go first. The first stop on our world tour, it doesn't get any more surf and turf than Huntington Beach, California, where bikinis and longboards are part of the culture. Huntington Beach is in Orange County, California, just south of L.A. An almost 10-mile stretch of soft, sandy beach, it's a playground for everyone under the sun. Bikinied sun worshippers, skimboarders, bodybuilders, pro beach volleyball players, paddleboarders, and hardcore surfers. And anyone who spends a lot of time at the beach experiences two things, sand in unexpected places and a major appetite. You have Taco Tuesday, you have Thirsty Thursday, you have Fun Day Sunday, and it's all happening all the time. And these food vendors are getting creative because they want your business. Slater's 50-50 throws down the gauntlet to all meet between the buns challengers with a mashup of two old favorites. Number 20 in our countdown, the 50-50 burger. The 50-50 burgers are signature patty. It's 50% ground beef and 50% ground bacon. Owner Scott Slater has taken the classic burger and reinvented it. So we take pork belly, we grind up our pork belly, mix them together, and we put it on the grill, fire it up, melt that pepper jack all over that delicious patty, Put some chipotle mayo on it, put some avocado mash on it, a little bit of bacon, brioche bun, boom, 50-50 burger. It's our signature 50-50 burger. Nice, thank, thank you. you so much. Burger. This is the kind of burger you want after a long day at the beach. When you think about a nice hot burger, you come to Slater. Good food, good burgers. Get your butt down here and have one. The 50-50 Burger at Slater's in Huntington Beach, California. Number 20 on our countdown. Best burger in Huntington Beach. Sounds of the surf, the birds, and you're enjoying the perfect spot on the beach. <laughs> and then you bite into a sandwich that crunches with half of the beach in it. Throw that sandy sandwich away and get ready to go to the southern tip of Baja, California. Cabo is the perfect place to work on your tan in perfect 80-degree weather. And no matter if you fly around the beach or are content sitting in the sun, at the end of the day, everyone needs to refuel. Want a hot dog? Not on this beach. You deserve an upgrade to number 19, Lobster and Shrimp Rienos. The Office Restaurant has been operating from this palapa, Spanish for open-sided dwelling, in Cabo San Lucas since the 70s. Their fresh from the Pacific delicacies blow everyone out of the water. I love to eat, so I'm ready. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm ready to bring on the good food. In the 1700s, lobster was so abundant and considered junk food that it was often served to prisoners in New England. And now it's one of the most expensive dishes in the world. Come for the beach, stay for the office's lobster and shrimp enchilada house special. The office combo is a chile relleno stuffed with lobster and cover it with the ranchero sauce. One enchilada stuffed with shrimp and cover it with guajillo sauce. The shrimp enchilada is filled with tomato, poblano chili, onions, and then saute. Everything is then folded into an authentic Mexican tortilla. And we put cheese on top and we put it on the broil so the cheese get melted. Wow. I just want to go face first. <laughs> so good. Cheers. Cabo. Lobster and shrimp rellenos at the office in Cabo San Lucas, number 19.
Next up, we follow our nose to the Philippines, where the smell of authentic Pinoy food spices up the night. We wanted food that's affordable and delicious. There's a lot of barbecue, lots of different types of food. And one of the most popular spots on the Boracay Beach Strip for both locals and tourists is Blue Smoke, home of the famous chorizo sandwich for over a decade. The party brings in number 18, chorizo sandwich. You want to try it? Yeah, Very absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Cherry Burger is basically a chorizo in a bun with a little bit of spice in it with a sauce that she made homemade and a little bit of vegetables. Thank you. This is really good. Very good combination. Yeah. Sweet. Spicy. Very good. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Okay. Salamat. Coming in at number 18, chorizo sandwich at Blue Smoke on Boracay Beach, Philippines. Next stop, Gulf Shores, Alabama. Known more for its country cooking than its adventurous side, the Bama Coast is a well-kept secret. From its white sand beaches to zip lining, it's also home to the National Shrimp Festival. The Gulf Coast is a just off the beaten path beach paradise. And the residents of the heart of Dixie take their beef very seriously. Strap on the feed bag, Southern style, at number 17, Wagyu Beef. Just steps from the shore, the hangout is a local institution and the perfect place to land a Wagyu steak. It's my first time being at the hangout, so I came to try the steak. Alabama Wagyu is a very highly marbled meat. More marbling, more fat content, more flavor. Chef Gallon cranks up the grill for the 14 ounce ribeye. We're gonna cook the steak medium rare. The most important step I think would be very, very hot grill because we're going to have a lot of char on the outside, but the inside of the steak, you'll still be able to see a lot of the marbling and a lot of the juices will still be sealed inside of the steak. The steak will remain juicier, it'll be full of flavor. The best thing about it, it was big and it was juicy. That was my favorite part. Wagyu beef, Bama style, our number 17. <laughs> While it may look like these beach bodies always eat healthy, don't let the ripped and toned sun worshippers fool you. Everyone saves room for dessert. Banana with chocolate, covered with chocolate. Coming in at number 16 on our list of best beach eats, we go south of the border for Chaco Banana. And just south of the border in Mexico is the small fishing village of Sayulita. A short cast from Puerto Vallarta. Boats bob in the blue waters. Surfers wait for the perfect wave, and artists from all over the world come here to capture the scenery. And during the midday heat, it's the perfect time to take a break for something cool and refreshing. Chaco Banana is both a restaurant and the name of its most popular frozen dessert on a stick. Chaco Banana, number 16. It's a dessert, it's a banana. Banana with Cover. chocolate, covered with chocolate. When you bite a choco banana, it's very creamy, oh. and then chocolate, and then and then nutritious stuff, like the right. granola. We have a motto here at Choco Banana. It is peel it, cut it, stick it, dip it, roll it, and eat it. So yummy. Love the chocolate and the banana. This one is so fresh after surfing. I love coconut. <laughs> Choco Banana Dessert on a Stick at Choco Banana Restaurant, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Number 16. Australians are drawn to any challenge under the sun. The best tan, falling out of airplanes, speedboats, working out for adoring crowds, and of course, chasing the brakes at world-famous Bondi Beach. And the one thing they all need to start their day with is a big breakfast. Bondi Surfer Breakfast is number 15. Matt and Kelly are two Aussie longboarders who like to get to this restaurant as fast as they can. I'll get a strong pot, why thanks. The Birichina Cafe is known as the place for the best breakfast on Bondi. Usually, like my favorite spot to fuel up in the morning. Why is this place so popular? 
Chef Bevan Higginson's crispy breakfast sandwiches. It's like right in here, I gotta go. SPF 50, check. Cool sunglasses, check. Golden tan, check. Food? Belly up to the beach as we count down the tastiest bikinis and boardwalks. Best beach eats. In Australia, surfers, skaters, and sunbathers get their breakfast bite on at world-famous Bondi Beach. Our number 15, the Birichina Cafe. Here at Birichina, our most popular dish is classic bacon and egg roll. Everybody loves the fried bacon, the fried egg. You know, it make, makes you feel a little bit good. Nice, beautiful coffee. I had bacon recently in America and it didn't taste anything like ours. That was a lot smokier, a lot saltier. Everything's different in Australia. The biggest question we ask everybody every morning, what sauce do you want on your roll? Tomato or barbecue? That, paired with a coffee, take away any hangover. Have you guys tried these? These are amazing. They've got like all your main things in it. <laughs> That's with salt and fat. <laughs> everybody comes down, picks up their coffee, picks up their classic bacon and egg rolls. Great little place. Breakfast at Birichina Cafe on Bondi Beach, Australia. Coming in at number 15. There's nothing like the combination of sun and salt air to make you crave something sweet. We head to Thailand for number 14 to crack some coconuts. Thailand, best known for its beaches and legendary warm water, is also a go-to hotspot for extreme thrill-seekers like base jumpers. And the best way to cool off? Ice cream and other ingredients in a coconut cooler. Chicago couple Mike and Teresa have come in from the hot Thai sun looking for a local refreshment. We popped into this little local place, the Flame Tree Restaurant. It's uh, kind of tucked away, a little cool, hip vibe. The Flame Tree's coconut cooler starts with a freshly picked coconut, split and scraped. Then it's crammed with fresh mango and strawberries, sticky rice, coconut and strawberry ice cream, with chocolate syrup, whipped cream, nuts, watermelon, and topped with a cherry. It's like a tropical sundae. Here, try this. It's the sticky rice at the bottom. It's delicious. We didn't even get to that far yet. <laughs> the Flame Tree Restaurant in Thailand for coconut coolers. It's our number 14. An hour's boat ride from the Yucatan Peninsula, Cozumel, Mexico, is an island paradise where three million people a year visit by cruise ship for a taste of number 13 in our countdown. A beach is a beach, but the food? That's another story. You're about to have a love affair with this rice. I'm being replaced by food. <laughs> Soft sand, hard bodies, and our endless summer search for the bikinis and boardwalks best beach eats continues. Less than an hour by boat from Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, the island of Cozumel attracts millions of visitors every year. Looking for the perfect beach getaway and a lot of seafood. Seafood extravaganza comes in at number 13. Bacanos Bar and Grill on Cozumel has been serving seafood since 1960 and steps from the sand on one of Cozumel, Mexico's nicest beaches. And every window of the open-air restaurant is filled with warm tropical breezes and views of the blue water. I'm crazy for seafood. Here your choices are pretty much seafood, seafood, and seafood. While Bacanos serves everything from fish tostadas to surf and turf shish kebabs, smell it. Oh. Their specialty is lobster. This crustacean delicacy is shelled, rubbed with mulatto chili, seasoned with lemon zest, and then pan-seared. Wow. And this part here is a game changer? Oh, <laughs> it's a game changer. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, some of that lobster. Oh, yeah. taste that rice. You're about to have a love affair with this rice. <laughs> and the sauce had just enough flavor. I might want to marry it. I love it. <laughs> I'm being replaced by food. <laughs> Oh, that's really good. That's really good. I am sold. It is flavorful. It's a party in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Bacano's fresh seafood extravaganza on the island of Cozumel, Mexico. Our number 13. When the suntan set wants to eat healthy, there are fewer healthier or friendlier places than Hawaii. 
and the fishing grounds just off Waikiki Beach, once the personal playground for the island's kings and queens in the 17 and 1800s, is famous for fresh fish that's literally caught hours before it's served. Two local favorites, Menpachi and Ahi Poke, come in at number 12. Chef Jason Paul's dining room floats on the Pacific Ocean. But before he sets sail on his sunset dinner cruise, he goes to Tamashiro's Fish Market to find the freshest catch of the day. Yeah, I want to get some of this fresh minpachi down here. Minpachi is a local reef fish that's indigenous to Hawaii. Right out of the ocean. You can smell it. Just finishing up here at Tamashiro's Market. Got my fresh ingredients. Getting ready to go to the uh, Spartan Queen and do a sunset cruise and dinner. And with the fresh island fish on the boat, Chef Paul is ready to start cooking. I'm scoring the fish so that when I steam it, all the good flavors go straight to the bone. I steam it with fresh Hawaiian seaweed with a little bit of green onions, a little Hawaiian chili water, and a little bit of soy sauce. Then I steam it until done, and then serve it over baby bok choy and steamed taro. <laughs> An even healthier fish dish on the menu is a traditional Hawaiian appetizer served at almost every party. Poke, the Hawaiian word for to slice or cut, is raw sashimi-grade tuna marinated in sesame oil, soy sauce, green onions, and garnished with Hawaiian seaweed. Pacific Ocean perfection. Rose, you know it's not a Hawaiian party without a little bit of fresh Hawaiian... Oh my god, guys! Poke's my favorite! Proof that there's no better place in the world to get fresh grilled or raw fish than the islands of Hawaii. Chef Jason Paul's Menpachi and Poke, our number 12. Yeah. Our next stop is South Florida. South Beach is where the beautiful people, with pockets as deep as their tans, flock for the summer. The girls here in Miami, they are crazy, wild, energetic, topless, they don't care. And when it comes to food, Miami has a monopoly on Latin influence. Sand, surf, and now it's time for some spicy turf. Leave it to the Miami heat for number 11, Nuevo Latino Steaks. Ladies. Hello, Chef. How are you? Wow. Chef Carlos Torres at the Angler's Hotel specializes in some of the Funshine State's best Nuevo Latino cuisine. Here we have a grilled New York steak with a Chilean mushroom sauce, a piquillo pepper from Spain, and a steak potatoes. Ooh, girl, I am not afraid. It's cooked perfect right now. Wow. It's just right. It's not too salty. Nuevo Latino cuisine at the Angler's Hotel in South Beach, Florida. Number 11 on our countdown. Now that we're discovering amazing beach food, let's move on to the amazing libations. Oh, get ready for the body shot. I hit my job. So far, we've seen a tidal wave of new and tasty beach food on Bikinis and Boardwalk's Best Beach Eats. From the half beef, half pork burgers in Huntington Beach, California, to the freshest fish you can find, cooked against the backdrop of a Hawaiian sunset to Chaco Bananas in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And later, we're gonna take you to a place in South Beach, Florida, where sushi is served sans clothes. But you gotta wash it all down with something, right? Sit back, it's always five o'clock here. Tropical Cocktails, coming in at number 10. First stop, Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. And at the mango deck, they don't need no stinking cups to drink tequila. Tequila! Virgin, first night. Work hard, play hard. Look at that. The body shot consists of salt, a lime in your mouth, and someone licking the salt off of your body, and drinking the tequila. What happens in Cabo stays in Cabo. Second stop on our search for the best beach cocktail, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Rio takes skin to a whole nother level. Brazilian bikinis, uh, they're God's gift to me. Okay, so now that it's time to get your drink on, 
Let's blame it on Rio and get a Brazilian. Can't come to Brazil without having a caipirinha. No one makes a caipirinha, Brazil's national cocktail, better than in Rio's Leblon neighborhood. They blend local cane sugar liqueur called cachaca and then muddle it with sugar and fresh lime to blend all the flavors together. I think it translates everything about Brazil because it's tropical, it's delicious, refreshing. Vira, vira, vira. On our last stop in our search to find the best adult beverage on the beach, we hit Florida's Gulf Coast. Here, locals brag about their soft as sugar sand. Combine this with some of the best body bronzing weather in the world, and about the only thing that would make it even more perfect is a great beach cocktail. Watch out, because you might get pulled into the undertow bar in Tampa, Florida, where no shirt and shoes means a blue Floridian cocktail. You have your Malibu, your blue carousel, top it off with some pineapple, shake it up, Get your booties to the undertow. We work in bikinis. We're fun. Toasting number 10 with tropical cocktails in Cabo, Rio, and Tampa, Florida. While you might love everything about the ocean, sun, sand, and the sights, conventional wisdom says not to go near the water until that last cocktail wears off. And restaurants are more than happy to help you forget about the beach and satisfy your appetite. Our next stop takes us to Sydney, Australia, where you can find beef on and off the beach. Bondi Beach Steak, number nine. Bondi, an Aboriginal word meaning water breaking over rocks, is one of the most famous beaches in the world, nicknamed the Playground of the Pacific. This is my first time bodyboarding. This is really difficult to learn. I'm really good at snowboarding. I'll stick to snowboarding <laughs> and just gaining the surface. <laughs> so where do the sun-worshipping carnivores go for the best steak in Sydney? Bondi Beach Hardware. A couple of flips in your flops and you're there. Food here and the cocktails are really good. Chef Dion Green is all about using fresh, locally sourced ingredients. All right, we got some grade A New South Wales beef here. He believes that quality beef doesn't need much more than an open flame. We're going to take this off the grill. We're going to brush it with oil. We're also going to brush some salt on it and make a crust. The salt's worked its way into the pores of the meat. So I'm just scratching the salt off so it's not too salty, but it's got a nice little crust on it. And that's perfect. So this is our horseradish cream. It's got a mustardy flavor for the steak. And this is a dill oil. And that is perfect. Medium rare steak on the pass. Hey, guys. is actually awesome. It's super juicy and it's cooked just right. I like this steak a lot and I love that it's got dill on top of it. I hope there's not too much garlic though. It might be bad for later tonight when we're out. <laughs> Bondi Beach Steaks at Bondi Hardware. Sizzling at number nine. One of the rewards of touring beaches all over the world is trying food that you can't get back home. So, as they say, when in Rome, or in this case, Cozumel, Mexico. This next Beach Eats is much more about taste than looks. Number eight, the exotic and tropical delicacy of lionfish. This less than conventional looking fish is usually found in more aquariums than on a plate. But for those with an adventurous streak looking for something light and tasty, this tropical fish is catching on. The lionfish is an introduced species to the island and it's pretty invasive. It's got no natural predators, and it's eating a lot of the smaller reef fish. Now some restaurants are starting to serve it as a delicacy. Today, Michelle and Uriel are going to La Perlita, one of the restaurants that features this exotic fish. The restaurant's pretty famous on the island for serving lionfish. So we're going to come in and see how it is. The lionfish thrives in the warm waters of Cozumel, and with fins and spines coming out from everywhere, it needs to be handled with caution. The venomous spikes are cut off, and the body of the fish is filleted. Then it's coated in egg batter and dipped in flour and coconut breading with a mango salsa topping. Wow. That is the egg salsa. Mango salsa. That's really good. The Lionfish of Cozumel, Mexico, our number eight. 
great weather, a golden tan, and amazing food. Must-haves for any beach vacation. And if you're anywhere near the warm waters of Gulf Shores, Alabama, or Oahu, Hawaii, a big plate of homegrown shrimp is all you need to complete your list. Shrimp is number seven on our list of best beach eats. And on the North Shore of Oahu, Hawaii, the Bonsai Pipeline and Sunset Beach draw surfers and suntanners from all over the world. And food trucks have fed the protein and carb-hungry crowds in this small beach town of Haleiwa since the early 1960s. New Hampshire Transplants' Mike Stacy and his wife are owners of the Big Wave Shrimp Truck. Their surfer specialty, the garlic shrimp plate. For you. For me, huh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's wife does the cooking. And seven years in this spot has taught her exactly what the beach crowd craves. Good food and lots of it. She starts with quick frying nine huge locally farmed shrimp. Adds two heaping scoops of rice, topped with fresh garlic saturated in butter and secret Thai seasoning, and garnishes that with homemade coleslaw. A plate fit for the hungriest beachcomber. Garlic shrimp. It's really good. Best shrimp in Hawaii! Even longer than they've been selling shrimp from trucks in Hawaii, the bayous of Alabama have been a secret slice of ocean paradise. Whether you're finding serenity on a paddleboard, burying your feet in the warm white sand, or peeling shrimp, the Gulf Coast is one of the most relaxing beach vacations you could ever take. That is, unless the biggest shrimp fans in the world are in town. Since 1971, this little slice of the Alabama coastline throws a party to celebrate what it does best, shrimp. The National Shrimp Festival in Gulf Shores is a four-day event covering five city blocks with over a quarter million people attending. Shrimp tacos. Boiled shrimp. Black and shrimp. Coconut breaded, fried, steamed, boiled. Bubba Gump would be proud. Mm, that is so good. <laughs> On the Gulf Coast, or for the surfers of Hawaii, shrimp is big. The National Shrimp Festival in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and Big Wave Shrimp Truck on Oahu's North Shore, number seven on our list. Our search for the world's best beach food has no borders or boundaries. Next, we stamp our passport for Vietnam, where the banh mi sandwich, coming in at number six, was born. And what makes Madame Huang's banh mi so unique? That's awesome. The warm sun and salt air bring out the best in everything. And in our quest to bring you Bikinis and Boardwalk's best beach eats, we found a lot of great food and drink. And in our quest for the perfect seaside sandwich, we turn it up a notch and go to Vietnam for a Southeast Asian adventure. And oh, so worth the flight. The beachside village of Hoi An is a quick and usually humid 30-minute drive from the Da Nang airport. And its unspoiled beaches have become an international destination since the mid-80s. But the banh mi sandwich, number six on our countdown, was perfected even before this. Your sister makes the bread and then you make the banh mi. Banh mi is garnished with lettuce, cucumber, the meat of your choice, pork, chicken or beef, pork pate, chili sauce, and a few tablespoons of Madame Fuang's secret ingredient. Banh mi is a product of the French colonial period in Vietnam, which ended in 1954 and was a favorite among the wealthy set who vacationed on Vietnam's beaches. Today, no one makes them any better than at Madame Fuang's, often credited for making the best banh mi in the world. The owner actually makes it for you, and uh, all the ingredients is very fresh. Here you are. Yeah, I mean, Thank you. Banh mi, portable like a sandwich. It's the perfect beach food. All the combinations, all the textures and the, and the flavors just work together perfectly. Have some good spice to it, you know? At number six, Madame Fuang's Banh mi sandwich in Hoi An, Vietnam. Are you ready to order? Yes. Sure. Can we please get the Tower 35 burger? To satisfy the beachcomb and burger purists who claim there's still nothing better than beef between the buns, the trade winds blow us back to Australia. That's where everyone goes, having a good time with all your mates. Surfer's Paradise Beach is on the eastern side of the continent, in the heart of Australia's Gold Coast. With families, tourists, and it's always different. It's never the same. They say those with a passion for life have a passion for food 
If that's true, that makes the beach town of Brisbane, Australia the ultimate beach burger paradise at number five. Open wide. Order in, table 23, one ribeye rare, and a tower. And the tower burger is an Angus um, Angel Bay New Zealand burger patty, and it's towered with crispy bacon, pineapple rings, flipped over egg, and melted cheese on a sesame seed bun, and served with fries. Afternoon, ladies. Tower burger. There we go. Thank you. Enjoy. I hope you can finish them. Let's attack. <laughs> My mouth is watering. It's got so many different things in it. It's got bacon, egg, cheese, patty. It's definitely the best on the Gold Coast that I've tasted so far. Brisbane, Australia's Tower Burger at Surfer Sandbar. Our number five. If you're looking for the ultimate combination of sun, surf, wahines, and canes, look no further than our 50th state. This is where perfect bodies crowd the beach to watch the best wave riders in the world. And good luck finding junk food. Beach food has evolved. At number four, fresh from the ocean, ahi sandwiches are the choice for the locals here. It's a natural choice for the island natives. Ahi tuna, also known as yellowfin tuna, is caught wild just offshore. We start off with fresh caught ahi that we get from our local fishermen. Cut it in the back here, season it, and put it, and I put a little sear on it on the flat top. At the Shark's Grill, a surfer's favorite, they even use fresh taro root to make the bread for the ahi sandwich. Finish it off with the sweet sesame sauce that we make in-house, and also some lettuce and tomato that's grown right here on the North Shore. <laughs> on it. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Bite it, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can eat it. Daily, if I could. <laughs> if you want to come to the North Shore and have a best ahi burger, come to Shark's Cove Grill. Ahi tuna sandwiches at the Shark's Cove Grill on Oahu's North Shore. Number four on our list. If food sizzling on the grill makes your mouth water, you don't have to go any farther than Brazil. Oh, look at that. Chicken heart? Yes. Is it chicken heart? Okay. On our bikinis and boardwalks, Best Beach Eats, we've covered every flavor on the beach. From coconuts to cocktails, hand-cut steaks to lobster rellenos. And now, for the most adventurous appetites, we've saved our favorite not-for-the-faint-of-heart food for last. And careful with those chopsticks. I've never ate anything off an Iggy girl. <laughs> That's me, right? But before we go there, and on our quest to find some not-for-the-queasy menu items, we go to Brazil, where this hardcore beach favorite is not for everyone. Be still, my beating chicken hearts, at number three. Aussie traveler Pete and his two friends, Stephanie and Emmeline, are meat lovers. That's why they came to Florianopolis, southern Brazil. I love meat. I'm an Australian guy, and I cannot wait to get in there. In Brazil, meat is king and steakhouses are known as churrascaria, which is Portuguese for barbecue. It's an homage to the fireside roasts of the gauchos of southern Brazil. Your meat of choice, chicken, beef, or pork, is skewered, rotisseried, and brought to your table. The waiters are literally just shaving it off on, onto your plate. Finally, it's their turn to taste what they came for. They're chicken hearts. Chicken heart? Yeah. Is it chicken heart? Okay. It's presented on a big stick and you have uh, 50 chicken hearts. It's the biggest plate of meat I ever eat. I say we try it together. Okay, one, one two, two, three. It's pretty good. It sort of tastes like pork. Sausage, yeah. Brazilian chicken hearts in Florianopolis, Brazil. Coming in at number three. Our next stop, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Warm Pacific swells, year-round tans, and food straight out of the ocean. Especially if you want to eat like locals. Coming in at number two, grilled octopus. We are on our way to the Ocean Grill. We're taking a panga, a small boat to get there. Whoa. The waves are coming in. It's a hidden treasure that only the most veteran travelers are willing to look for. Megan and TJ, a couple of American expats, have lived here for six years. After a quick 10-minute ride on the Panga, they've arrived. What are you going to get? I'm going with the octopus. The catch of the day is literally the catch of the day. 
The fish is fresh from the day. Octopus is also fresh from the bay. From crawling on the ocean floor to sizzling on the grill the same day. It's a very simple recipe. It's a grilled octopus. We take it out and bait it with a calamata chaconada. I would say it's kind of like chicken, but not. <laughs> it's just a flavor explosion in your mouth. <laughs> Salud. Salud, Puerto Vallarta. Grilled octopus at the Ocean Grill in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Slithering in from the ocean floor at number two. We've tantalized you with tanned bodies and tequila shots. So what can top that? We're glad you asked. Our number one best beach eats dish can be found, where else, but in the land where everything is taken to the limit. Miami, Florida. This dish is so secretive that it's served in very few restaurants in the world, and definitely behind closed doors, and by special invitation only. Naked Sushi in South Beach is our number one best beach eats. The Kung Fu Kitchen in the Catalina Hotel is only a block from Miami Beach. But a world away to those who've never heard of this very unique and exclusive dining experience. It's one of the few places in the country that can pull off this form of dining that's even considered uncommon and underground in Japan, where it's rumored to have started in the 1970s. We want to go to Naked Sushi. It's a treat for our guy friends. So <laughs> should be a... I want to see their reactions. Nice spot. Amazing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what we have here is called Nyotai Mori, which is the presentation of the female body. Does she talk? <laughs> a lot of people don't quite know how to eat off a naked body. They're kind of stunned, but I just tell them just grab your chopsticks and just pick up and dig in. And in Japan, both women and men serve as the uh, sushi platter. Also, the models are not allowed to speak, move, or open their eyes. Here in the U.S., it's a bit more interactive. Do you feel like you're getting more naked each time someone picks a piece of sushi off of you? Yeah, it's kind of scary. <laughs> Where's the water coming? Is that your sweat? Or like... No, it's that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where's no. that coming from? It's from the fish. Is that your typical lunch? <laughs> sushi at the Kung Fu Kitchen in Miami, Florida, the Sunshine State, where the rules are thrown out, along with the clothes. It comes in at number one in our Best Beach Eats Countdown. Only in South Beach. South Beach. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.